Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzlingly white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. Hello and welcome to Closer Walk Catholic Communications. I'm Father Bayer, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. The Feast of the Transfiguration. I've oftentimes thought, wow, wouldn't it have been wonderful to have been able to experience Jesus in the flesh? To be alive at that time, you know, never thinking that I would be chosen as one of the apostles, but get to hear him speak and watch his miracles and do this, that, and the other. And Peter, James, and John, as far as they knew, they were kind of going on a camping trip. Okay? Now really understand kind of what's going on here. Peter, James, and John were Jews. They had been schooled in the Jewish tradition. So they knew of Moses and they knew of Elijah. You know, Moses was the father of Israel. He's the one who had, had you know, protected them and rescued them and brought them out of slavery. Elijah was a great prophet. So we had heard about these people all of our lives. Never knew them. But, you know, just take it out of that context and say, as Americans, people talked about George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. People being the stuff like that. So for us to have an experience, it was like, we've heard our forefathers talk about this. We've heard them talk about Moses and Elijah. And now all of a sudden, Jesus changes, and here they are, Moses and Elijah. They were so frightened, they didn't know what to speak. They didn't know what to say. But they said, I don't know what's going on here, but I don't, I don't want to leave. I want to stay here. We'll build a tent, you know, you, Moses, and Elijah. We'll stay here. We'll sleep outside. We'll do whatever it takes. And then when they came to, so to speak. There was no one but our Lord there. And he was telling them, you know, that you know, he kept all this to himself, but don't tell anyone till I'm risen from the dead. What does that mean? They didn't know that yet. And so, what does the transfiguration mean for us? What does it mean when we have that point that God becomes so real to us that I don't know what to do with it. I call them grace moments. I call them moments 
in life where I know God is as real and in this situation as I am sitting here talking to the people in the studio. I can see them. I can feel them. I know they're here. I can watch their reaction. And I call them grace moments. And I've seen grace moments. I was with a lady who died. And she uh, she was so funny. She was a wonderful, simple lady of very little means. And, you know, through the dying process, I would visit her. And, you know, I asked her, I said, are you scared? She said, scared. She said, no. She said, when the Lord comes for me, he's going to bring his mama with him. Because his mama wants to see who's this woman who's been bothering her all her life. He wants, he wants to make sure that she knows and she's going to be right there with him. And when she died, I'm telling you, the look on her face was exactly what she told me. Did I see the Blessed Mother and the Lord? No. I didn't see him. But I know they were there. Very dear friends of mine lost a daughter with multiple deformities from birth. Lived in a diaper. Never did this all of her life. Lived for almost 40 years. And at that moment when the angels came, here she was. She saw him. She was reaching for him. And you know that. You know it. No, I don't have a picture of it. No, I can't tell you. But I know that God was there. I know that. And to me, that's a transfiguration. I've seen God like I've never seen him before. I've experienced his presence. I know he's there. Long story. Lebanese convention. The study of the dance. The man whose father-in-law was best man at my grandfather's wedding, who I never knew, who died when my mother was 15. Got to talking away from the church. Talked till the sun came up the next morning when he went to confession. And God was there. It was real. When you have those moments in life, and it's not, oh, yeah, well, you're a priest. God gave you those moments. God gives those moments to anyone who has the eyes of faith to see them. And how many times have I heard people with loved ones? Something came in that room right before she died. And there was a chill, there was a breeze, there was something. These are the people who, with the eyes of faith, don't go check the air conditioner when that happens. They wait and they experience it because they're looking at it through the eyes of faith. And they can feel and they can know God's presence. That's when we're transfigured. That's when we see God and feel his presence in a completely different way. And many of you who are listening to this can probably call the office and say, I got one better than that. Make sure you tell Father this. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Any more than I doubt that God makes his presence known to us in some of the most difficult times of life. And this usually happens to me as a priest when someone comes to me and they preface it with Margaret, 
Well, Father, you're going to think I'm crazy, but. And they start to tell the story. I don't think they're crazy. I don't think they're crazy at all. So many times I have had people who in the midst of their grief, and everyone knows when we, when we lose a gift from God, we go, really, why? Why now? Why here? Why whatever? And this older couple, he had retired. They were living together. Yeah, I mean, obviously, and they weren't used to being married 24 hours a day. And he was driving her crazy and vice versa. And so they, they, they'd come and they had done a little counseling. You know, not that they didn't love each other. It was just they found after, you know, 50-something years of work and living together 24 hours a day, very much of a challenge. And so we went through all that. And then he died. And she was so, so heartbroken. I mean, she missed him so bad. Well, they, they, they had a little routine. Every morning at 10 o'clock, he knew to come in the house because she had his cup of coffee on the table and they sat at 10 o'clock every morning and had a cup of coffee. And, you know, she was just missing him so bad. And where their kitchen was located they got afternoon sun they never ever got morning sun you know just it was they, their kitchen was what was facing west and she came in and it was really bad she'd had a tough night and it took her weeks to make a little coffee and not put out that second cup which was always you know a painful reminder of how much she missed him but this particular morning, she sat down, 10 o'clock, had a little cup of coffee, and lo and behold, the sun came through that window and shined on her chair. And she said, okay. She called him Mule. She said, Mule, let me know he's okay. As long as he's okay, I'm okay. Now you might think, what's this guy talking about? He's not teaching Catholic teaching. He's teaching superstition. Well, I wonder what Peter, James, and John felt like when they're standing there and see Moses and Elijah who've been dead for hundreds of years. And it was, if you call it a God wink, if you call it grace moments, call it whatever you want. But through the eyes of faith, those who long to see God and those who long to hear from God. God doesn't leave us. He's with us. And in our need, God is always present. And in our need, God sometimes gives us signs. And some people who don't view things with the eyes of faith think, isn't that a coincidence? No, thank you. It's not a coincidence. It's a grace moment that God gives us. And when we've been blessed to receive that moment from God, we're transfigured. It should never, ever be the same again. Stay with us. We'll talk more about the transfiguration when we come back. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Closer Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. As they were coming down the mountain, 
He charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. Hello and welcome back to Close to Walk Catholic Communication. I'm Father By, your host, and we're glad that you can join us. They came down from the mountain. Went back to ordinary life. And these moments, these moments of grace, these moments of revelation, these moments when we see God like we've never quite seen God before, are the opportunities for us to bring God back into a world that doesn't readily recognize him or welcome him. Oh, how was your retreat? Oh, God, it was wonderful. It was so great. I didn't want to come home. Well, when you get home, guess what? The grass still needs to be cut. The screen door is still broken. And the cat's still pregnant. So don't, you know, the world hadn't changed. But you have. And you should have. And just because the world hadn't changed doesn't mean we can't change the way we choose to live in the world. And there, I hope, in all of our lives, there are events. Some of them can be very, very joyful. Some of them can be very, very difficult. But when we go through these events, somehow things will never quite be the same again. And they change us. Some can become very, very bitter because the events were unplanned and we don't see the hand of God in it. Some of them can be very, very difficult that we struggle to see the hand of God and he gives us a grace to make it better if we seek it. It's really not about exactly what happens. It's what we do with what happens. And if we see it only through human eyes, it makes no sense. If we see it through the eyes of faith, we can usually find meaning in it. One of those I'll never be the same moments for me came in Calcutta. Uh, meeting Mother Teresa, being in a town with 27 million people with 18 million sleeping in open air, watching people die on the streets and starve to death. Things change. I, I never had the same prescription ever again. And seeing people who absolutely struggled to live, to exist, seeing whole families living on the streets and bathing their children out of a fire hydrant, cooking their dinner on a pan on a cow pie, cow dung, you know, because they could light it and they could cook in this little pan and feeding their children and walking down early in the morning and seeing whole families sleeping on top of each other like a litter of puppies because it's warmer that way. And then going back to your parish and having the ladies' guild get into a big argument about whether or not we're serving ham or turkey at the Thanksgiving luncheon. Get a grip. But what was the most amazing was, was saying mass here in the parish church and seeing the hundreds of people who came forward longing for the Eucharist just waiting to encounter God. Didn't matter what time of the day you had it. 
There were no buses. There was no parking lot because none of them had cars they had to walk. Very few of them had much clothes, but they had on the best clothes that they had when they came to that church. And they were as happy and as joyful and as faithful. And then coming back to a parish where if you change the mass time, people switch parishes. Or if you say a sermon no one likes, then you know you get reported to the bishop and they quit giving money whole different way, a whole different way of being transfigured and seeing life. The very first time I met mother was not in Calcutta, it was in Rome. And in the talk she gave, she said, my name is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. She said, and I enjoy the freedom of poverty. We have programs of that in our country. And she said, no. She said, it's not that I own nothing, but nothing owns me. And that idea of having the freedom not to worry about the things of this world, but only to worry about the things of God, that's a grace moment. And you come to understand that. And I'm not asking you to move out on the streets. I'm just asking you to have a different perspective. Asking you, we, we had a horrible story this Christmas, and I read it, and I, I'm not even sure what city it was in, but a 13 and a 15-year-old brothers. It was Christmas Eve, and they were fighting over who got what Christmas gift. And their older sister, 23 years old, said, it's Christmas Eve. Would you all please shut up and stop fighting? The 15-year-old shot her and her, her newborn baby and killed them both. And the 13-year-old brother shot him. I just, and, and we, call, we call where we live civilization? No, it's not. And it's that type of transfiguration that takes place in the world in which we live that, like I said, just because I'm different, just because I see things differently, doesn't mean the world's gonna fall into place. Doesn't mean the world's gonna see it the same way. But, if I, but I've, I've really been transfigured. I see it differently. I act differently. I live differently. Things don't upset me the same way they used to. Things are not as important as they used to. When you see people who have absolutely nothing, but having communion is the most important thing they do every week of their life. And then when you have people who live in very nice homes, work a 40 hour week and saying Sunday is my only day to sleep and I'm too tired to get up and go to church, I'm only day to play golf, I'm only day to hunt, I'm only day to fish. There are no eyes of faith. And you know, we're in the Lenten season. And when our Lord told them as they came down the mountain, don't tell anybody about this until I've risen from the dead. And I went, now what's that about? I don't even know what that is. I want to know when it's coming. And so, you know, the, the, the disciples had to see things through the eyes of faith. And through the eyes of faith, they came to understand what God was talking about. But also through the eyes of faith, we come to understand the incidents and the accidents of our lives. We come to understand, you know, I had all these wonderful plans and nothing that I planned on worked out the way I wanted to and this, that, and the other. I don't know why God does this to me. And if that's what praying and going to church does, and if you have to go through what I've been through, then I'm just giving up and I'm not going anymore. That doesn't happen in the eyes of faith. 
That doesn't happen when people have had that moment that they've seen God like they've never seen him before. And they realize that God has a reason and a purpose for everything. He may not give us everything we want, but we will, he will certainly provide all that we need, even the opportunity to grow in grace so that we might open our eyes in faith and we might come to learn and come to understand. And so many times, people have thought that that relationship with God is a quid pro quo. Well, God, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to use my envelopes and I'm going to be generous. But God, if you don't give me what I want, and if this doesn't happen, and if you give me a cross to carry, and if you ask me to suffer through something, then God, you and I are done, okay? I mean... You know, you know, how about giving a little bit here, okay? I know what I want. You know what I want. How come you don't provide what I want? These are the people who make God in their own image and likeness. Anyone who reads the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, or Luke, anyone who wishes to be my disciple must take up his cross and follow me. And Luke says, take up his cross daily and follow me. And we always see the difficulties of life, the struggles of life, the challenges of life. God is mad at me. He's done this to me. The challenges that we have are invitations to grow in our knowledge and our understanding of God. When he was carrying the cross in order that we might one day see the face of God and enjoy salvation, there was no picnic. That was something, even he didn't want to do it, you know, but he said, Father, this cup should pass and let it pass, but not my will, thy will be done. Lord, I want what you want for me, and I want to fulfill the plan. So in the eyes of faith and in the fulfillment of his mission, God accepted even the most difficult thing you could ever ask anyone to do, to lay down your life after being treated the way he was treated. And in doing so, he fulfilled the mission, and we're the beneficiaries. We were all in his will. We were all the ones that he wanted to share in what he had. Not his will here on earth to be rich, famous, and everything else, but his will in heaven that one day we might share that. When we're transfigured, we come to understand it. Thanks for being with us. May each day bring you closer in your walk with the Lord. God bless.